early 1800s, actually, with Benjamin Hale. He was a Sea Island cotton farmer who lived in Sam Camden, South Carolina. And he had the good fortune of discovering gold on his property. And then the house was uh, discovered in the 1970s by a film crew. Poor boys, you see that they did inherit the home because that none of them lived old enough to be old enough. Benjamin Hale died when he was 37. 12,500 words documented on it. Six people I know that I know of died in this house. Greetings everyone. I am not at another theme park, baby. I'm actually in Gainesville. Now, the reason why I'm in Gainesville is that I am going to this house right here, the historic Halley Homestead house, which kind of sounds like kind of a weird thing because this homestead is a house. You get it. Anyway, there's something weird about this house that I wanted to check out and I don't think anybody's ever been here. I don't think anybody's ever created a vlog here. So, you guys are going to see what weird thing is going on in this house and you're going to think it's weird too. Right in time, last tour begins at 1.15. You take a look, this is the scale model of the historic Howley House. And a lot of different books and photographs that they got from inside the house. Photo of John Chestnut, Howley. In the uh, uh, early 1800s actually, with Benjamin Hale, he was a Sea Island cotton farmer who lived in Sam Camden, South Carolina. And he had the good fortune of discovering gold on his property in 1827, Here? No, back in Camden, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So that's how the Hale family made their money with the gold mine, because farming's not all that lucrative. So they had these glowing tails of Florida because it doesn't rain. I mean, it oh. doesn't snow. The ground doesn't freeze as much as it does up in South Carolina. And all this was virgin, unplanted soil, and land was fairly cheap. So he thought about that in the back of his mind. He had a series of successive crop failures due to flooding and caterpillars. So he sent his family down here. Um, his son Thomas was the first that came. Uh, he was married to a lady named Esther Serena Chestnut Hale. Gainesville had just become the county seat of Alachua County before it was up in Newnansville, which is nothing more now than a, um, an old historical marker and a church cemetery. And the reason that they moved the county seat is because they were building a railroad that was going to run from Bernadina Beach to Cedar Key. A general store here called Hale and Savage. And so Edward bought the property back at the auction and deeded it back to Serena, Thomas's wife. Very unusual for a woman to be a property owner, much less a plantation manager in those days. But the reason we think that that was done, it was so that she would not be associated with Thomas's bad debt. Ended up building a home in the Duck Pond area of Gainesville and using this house for parties. And they were very well attended. People would come as far away as Atlanta, Georgia by train. And then the house was um, discovered in the 1970s by a film crew and they ended up filming a movie here called Gal Youngin. And then in 18, 1985 and 86, it was added to the National Register of Historic Places and restored to its current present day condition in 1995. So cool because like, here. Um, oh, the house was Ross. abandoned. His name was William Ross. Just stumbled upon it when they were trying to make a movie. They made a movie in here. That's the original paint color. Like right now, there I've been in like the third coat of paint. They paint it not too often. Look below the house. So essentially, this family found this house. They built this house. Everybody came to this house at one point in time. They abandoned the house. It is left all alone. The film crew came over in the 1970s. They found the house. They shot a movie in the house and it's been marked as like a historic site this entire time. What? Oh, wow, look at that. So the room we're in now was a school room. Our first organized school was an African-American school organized in Waldo. 12,500 words documented on it, and the reason we think that it was started was because Serena um, didn't have paper. It was a scarce commodity. What we find, because we have portions of her diary, is that she would write something on the walls and then when she would get a writing packet, she would transpose what she wrote into the diary. So we do believe that's the primary reason it got started. But it kind of became a tradition here, and so if you look at, if you look at the walls here in the school room, it's very indicative of school writing. So here's some ABCs that are written over here. And over here you have math problems. John Hale, the oldest child, wrote, I will be very glad when school lets out. 
So I've seen that things change. And then probably my favorite writing on the wall over here is a picture of Abraham Lincoln that the kids drew. And he's labeled with his top hat and his big ears. She used to do what would just count for silverware. So it's March 29, 1983. Here's her forks, her big spoons, and her little spoons. We're like, why is she counting her silverware? And then over here behind the door, you see where she's counting plates, china, saucers, cups. What we find, because we have portions of her diary, this is the day before she took out a mortgage on her home. So it may be that she was adding up the equity in her home to see what she could borrow against. But it was also the day after a dinner party. So she may also be making sure she got all of her stuff back. It would have been a, one of the friends of um, Evans Hill, the attorney, was Wade Hampton, and his family donated this desk. It's called a partner's desk because two people can sit at it. And Wade Hampton often came to the parties here. In fact, the oral history says he enjoyed blackberry wine. So mm. remember, the parties were held during Prohibition. So, hey, if you wanted a drink, this is the place to go. So. This is crazy. Believe it or not, this is the piano as well. Um, oh, it's yeah. It's bad condition. So there is some party writing in here as well. If you want to see what Thompson and Serena look like, here's their photos. Oh, yeah, this is the lady from the other room. Love. They actually have the same birthday, May 31st, and they were born four years apart, and they died about a year apart. She died in, um, they were died in 19, or 1895 and 1896. 15 drops of laudanum, which would be morphine, a teaspoon of paragoric with a glass of water, repeat every three hours if necessary. So anybody that's taken opiates knows those are a natural constipant. So that's definitely the active ingredient in this recipe for diarrhea. But the turpentine is kind of problematic, but I'm sure you wouldn't care if you had that much. <laughs> Where right, does this keep your mouth shut. So much water. On August 14, 1927, I have heard the good so days of you, of your, of your, but they, sir, but they, okay, I, don't, I don't know what that part says, but wow, look at the history of all of this. So this is a pastor closet, and um, basically, this is what's in here is some of the artifacts we found in the archaeological survey. Oh, they were built into the hearth. Henry Gaines, who did the fireplaces and the chimneys, um, was a master carpenter, and several of the things that he did, he was rumored to have signed all of his work in an inconspicuous place. So we're not going to take the fireplace apart to find it, but he probably does have some kind of signature or maker's mark somewhere behind here. Yeah. What you'll see up here is our Rubicon Rats display, um, some advertisements, there's a sample of it, and it's something that Serena used. And so what you'll see, and it's much easier to read there, but what you'll see, those four prominent lines that are written above the, that um, table there says, hot sharp vinegar will take off mortar and paint from window glass, soda water will remove smoke from walls, cayenne pepper will drive away ants and mice, and rum, and it, that's what they use to kill the rats. And it's a morphine schedule of when she was giving people drugs when they were sick. And uh, six people I know, that I know of died in this house, Serena's sister, um, three, three of her children at least. She had a grandchild that died here at the end. This room is cooler. Oh, wow. So this room is a music room, and it has a very musical family. Serena actually played, was the first piano player at the church she founded, which is the Canada Hall Presbyterian Church. It's down the road, it's still in operation. This is the original crib, it's been gently restored. Had, there were no twins, so this saw a lot of crying babies. All 15 children were raised in this, and um, and then you'll see some stuff over here. Um, the, a lot of people mistake for children's furniture, but believe it or not, furniture back then just wasn't built really high off the ground. Yeah. Serena was 5'2", Thomas was 5'4", they weren't tall people to start with, so it's actually adult furniture. But well, We get to go upstairs to the next section. <laughs> this is crazy, guys. This is like Correct. probably the craziest thing I've seen in Florida thus far. died back in South Carolina and never made it here. So only two girls had to share this room. And their names were um, Amelia and Mary. Amelia, we don't have any pictures of her. She married a Supreme Court. But in this case, it was the next to the last child. So this was where, you know, 12 boys had to spend their time, although no more than 10 at a time. Because remember, when the time they were born until they turned six, they stayed in the nursery. And then some of them that get, did get old enough to move away did. Four boys, you see that they did inherit the home because that none of them lived old enough to be old enough. Um, John was 19, and Thomas and James were 32 and 35, and none of them even got married. They never left home. Benjamin Hale died when he was 37. He married Rachel. She was the chaperone for the parties that we saw listed as a chaperone because uh, she outlived him by so many years. 
They had one daughter, and that was Bessie Hale, and she was the one that ate so much water. That was the Hale house. I think I said Haley house earlier, or Holly house, I don't remember. That was our tour. What'd you think, Jenny? It was awesome. <laughs> it was it's awesome. hot. Yeah, it's hot. But the cool thing is like learning about the writing on the wall. It's weird to see it, and you see it literally in every single room, just scribbles. It is a bunch of tiny scribbles on the wall. So learning about like that part of thing, especially when it comes to Florida history and all of history, like it's crazy like they had to write on the walls because they couldn't even get paper so they wrote on the walls and then when they were able to transcribe it onto paper then they put it in their diaries afterwards so the entire house is just scribbled but that's it that's something to check out if you're here in Gainesville that's it thanks for watching smash that subscribe button baby I'm sick of this I'm sick of this heat already I'm out <laughs>